Have you ever wondered how your dog ever came to be? I mean, we, we know how ruthless nature is. I mean, only the best fits gets to reproduce and continue their genes into the next offspring. But how do you go from something as gnarly and majestic as a wolf to something as pathetic as a chihuahua? Obviously didn't happen overnight, but did it happen faster than we think? This speech is, these eight questions are going to be, it's what this speech is for. Uh, more specifically, what is domestication syndrome? What is the history behind and the research behind domestication syndrome? And what are some of the causes of domestication? So, what is domestication syndrome? Domestication syndrome was coined by Charles Darwin when he made the simple observation that, hey, domesticated animals are different from their wild counterparts, both physically and domestically, or both physically and attitude, I mean, docile. But that's where it really ends. Uh, he makes two hypotheses, which I'll later talk about, but even those are pretty weak. Uh, what really gave domestication syndrome its traction was Dmitry Belyev's ex experiment on the which is now today known as the Silver Fox Domestication Experiment of 1959. Uh, what's the history behind domestication and its research? Well, we have the, like I said, the D Silver Fox Experiment. What he, what happened was that uh, Dimitri and his researchers would breed and kill foxes. So, for, so they would uh, keep the nicer foxes and let them breed, and then kill the meaner ones, and then. Continue with the the next off generation. Let the, the them breed and then kill off the bad ones until at some point they noticed some drastic differences in their in one generation where they had instead the they where their sh how do I describe this their skulls shrunk their ears instead of being sharp they floppy their tails instead of being straight or floppy too they they became Pattern, skin patterns, fur patterns rather, uh, spots, polka dots that you would see in dogs. And this game gives the question, how? We know, we know how it happened, but why? Or so, rather on a micro level, how, how, how did this happen physically? So how can, you were breeding for traits, you got different, you were breeding for attitude more like and you got physical differences so here uh we go into another experiment or hypothesis called the self-domestication hypothesis of bonobos uh bonobos rather being the counter domesticated counterpart of the chimps which back we didn't know they were so uh domesticated the domesticated counterparts of chimps we only know that today is because of how closely they related they are through their genes genealogy um which was performed, the research was performed by Brian Hare, Victoria Wauber, and Richard Rangham, which uh, all Harvard and Duke researchers. Uh, what they found out is that the differences between the two is that is their aggression level. Chimps are much more aggressive. They would uh, commit atrocities, war crimes, what we know as war crimes, and cannibalism onto each other. Whereas the Bonobos are a lot more chill and docile. Um, which, and then not to mention they have physical differences like shrunken skull, dull teeth, longer reprodu reproduction cycles in the bonobos. So, begs the question, why? Why would, na uh, why is this, why would na natural selection want this? Why is, why would evolution ever want this? Well, being more docile, you're more, uh, social. Meaning more, maybe more potential for offspring, more, uh, trust in a group so more group bigger groups may be formed more groups may be formed all that but what are the co possible causes for domestication well charles darwin had two hypothesized but uh they were pretty weak and can obviously can easily be eliminated in all fairness to him he didn't have today's technology Wh which by the way his two hypotheses was better diet and animal hybridization I won't go into that. 
Today we know that the physical changes is the um, reduced size and function of the adrenal glands, which causes, which is largely important in the fear and stress, and obviously adrenaline produced in the body. So we have reduced size and function of those adrenal glands in animals. Not to mention, but what does that have in common with physical difference in physical changes? Well, what causes those changes is the crest cells, the neural crest cells. Neural crest cells have, I want to say 50%, let's see, let me think. No, they have a 20% involved in all phenotypes, which in all physical characteristics, 20% of those are involved with the neural crest cells. So we notice that the spots that are lighter from the domesticated foxes are from where the they're the least uh, having the least amount of neural crest cells. So we now know today, thanks to Kunzel and N. Sashner, who narrowed down to neural crest cells, have found this out. And it was also thanks to the Trutz. Leod Miller, who's offered his uh, expertise on the how the uh, neuro, neuro crest cells have affected specifically the foxes that we know all this today. So in conclusion, how's all, how does this answer the question? Well, we do know that uh, Bonobos, we are as we as you know, uh, we now know what is the domestication syndrome, what's the history behind it and uh, what are the causes, but how is this how useful to us? Well, it, has, it lets us know, it gives us clues onto our own history. Like one hypothesis, are we domesticated? Which is likely since, let's look at our previous ancestors, Neanderthals, they're smarter than us. The Homo erectus, they're a lot faster than us. They're both stronger than us. So how come we're alive and they're not? likely because we were domesticated. The only advantage we had over them is language and language doesn't develop in a generation.